I thought about letting you guys extend this out. I'm not going to grade this today, so if you want to add to it, I think that'd be really, uh, the weekends make for a good time. I mean, yeah, take time to relax, reflect, refresh in yourself, uh, but there, it's a great opportunity to get a lot of shots over the weekend. You're probably, anybody traveling? Anybody going anywhere? A couple of you. Yeah, cool. We do a lot of shooting at the lake. Uh, we'll be at the lake too, since we all have the weekend off from having to go to the Fox, which is kind of a bummer at the time, but it's also gonna be nice on Saturday when you can relax. So looking through the assignment was pretty standard. Uh, I want you to enter five challenges with your 50 photos. What I didn't think about, and this is because uh, I'm not quite so uh, seasoned in this guru shots yet. I've only used it a couple, probably a couple months. That you guys had a limited upload amount. Did everybody run into that? It only allowed you to do 10 at a time? Uh, I could upload 30, but then I can upload 30 and upload 30 and upload 30. So you were able to do 30, but they're only able to do 10, and I'm only able to do 21. <laughs> it might have something to do with the sizes. So most of my photos, if we're looking at mine, uh, our, there's a complete mixed bag of cell phone and like R3, R2, CR2, CR3 files that are like this was a cell phone, but this was like a Canon 70D or something raw. This was a student camera cell phone. What I'm getting at is I think size. So if you up 25 megabytes was the max on the size individually, I wonder if like Michael's was lower, so it was around like three or four, so you were able to do more, but Dawson might have been uploading like something at 20 megabytes. May maybe it's something in that. Uh, it's hard to tell. <clears throat> well, mine was from a D85, I thought. Okay, but you processed them. Yeah, not sure. Uh, essentially, we could have gone with anything. Uh, there are others that I had in my notes, but we ran out of time on Wednesday. It's 500 PX. And you should look into other options. There's some really cool. 500px is, I believe, owned by Getty. This one will allow you to actually license your photos and sell your photos online. If you have a, someone's image, if you have a face that you can identify, or if you have a brand like Coca-Cola, Nike, then it's going to deny you without proper permission and contracts. But something like a grasshopper or sunset, anything like that, uh, you can sell those on there. The, if you don't do it exclusively, they keep a pretty good percentage. Uh, Viewbug, I pay about three, four bucks a month for 500px, so I didn't want you guys to be paying for this. Uh, and Viewbug is cool. Um, hmm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get into it. Well, I can try to. It's weird. Uh, the problem with Viewbug that I didn't like is it's really limited unless you pay. And I haven't ever paid, like it'll only let you upload three photos at a time, things like that. And it, for this assignment, just didn't make sense. Oh, great. Let's help the AI get smarter. Is it? Okay, we're, it, I do all these on my phone anyways. I don't really know them as far as, um, I uploaded a few of my photos to it, but both of them are more limited, and with 500px, if you don't pay, it's pretty limited, and Viewbug is super limited. I haven't spent a dime on Guru Shots outside of entering uh, competitions. So more like Film Festival, like Film Freeway, where I pay about that price roughly per... Uh... <laughs> you made it. Is that why you're always late? Because your phone's set 10 minutes after class? <laughs> uh, speaking of which, let's start with Caitlin. Um, putting you on the spot, because I looked at some of these with you, and you have a really, really good library going of photography. Yeah, she's got some really nice stuff. So let's talk about, let's talk about some of your photos. Today won't be a very long day. It's more just seeing your guys' portfolios and guru shots and what you guys have been 
what you're interested in shooting, how you're shooting it, what you're shooting with, those are all things that are uh, worth talking about. Now, I know you did a lot of this with your cell phone, right? No, so this was taken from my basic photography. This one? And then I went and Photoshop and like, got rid of like, a lot of the, the like, glass look from like, like the... Yeah, from the aquarium? Yeah. So that's where a polarizer would have helped you a ton. If you had a polarizer, that would have cut through the reflections of the glass and water and things like that. So one of those filters that we'll look at as we go further into the program, or further into the cinematography. That's great. A little damselfly. Is that, what is that? Those are some of my friends' house. Her parents have like this like different Okay. There's like fake flowers, so I just got like really close to it. I had a hard time telling what that one was. Sure. Uh, great with low light. Uh, you had to do a little adjustment there, right? I think you uh, you were looking at that one yesterday or the day before. And then, of course, sports, super popular, uh, more journalistic style kind of thing, right? And you did a lot of baseball last spring. Did you do all the games? Yeah. Yeah. So Caitlin works with Brandon's team as well. More of that decor. That one's bad. I think that one's bad. It, what, what do you not like about it? I'm going to ask you that. I don't know. So, like, I don't, nothing in the back is really centered. Um, I got you. The composition is a little. And then their faces are kind of like, you kind of like. <laughs> well, the lighting on their face isn't bad. You can, it, I guess, uh, framing, if you'd have had the chance to frame them up differently. But this looks more like you guys were out hanging out and you just snapped a photo real quick. Probably not a photo session. So if they're paying you for like couple of photos, you know, engagement photos, something like that, then you want to take control of that and frame it up a little more to your liking. But if you're just getting your friends up, the lighting's not bad. And that's I can see their face just fine. Uh, obviously, what what did you shoot this one with? So you probably had to. Oh, here it is. I don't know why it, not all the information was up. <clears throat> You were getting used to it. I can tell because your ISO is at 6400, which you might have had to have been with how dark that was. So did you have to take a lot of noise out? Yeah. Grain, noise, that, because you were talking to Joey about some of that when I came into. Um, and this is where I like to get into the metadata is great with these things. So you're at a 24 millimeter, 1 60th of a second, an F4, which you could have opened that up a little more and dropped your ISO some more. And that would have blurred your background a little more and it would have helped with that grain. So does all that make sense? Any of that make sense? If you can open up your aperture more, you can lower your ISO a little bit and get a little higher quality photo. But it'll be a lower depth of field. OK, so I'm not going to go through. Oh, I like that. What do you have in the foreground here? Oh, that's her hand. That framing's great. So yeah, I just don't, was that a cell phone? No, I'm not sure why it loses metadata sometimes. And it depends on how you export, I suppose. That's cool. Is that the zoo? And then what was this for? What was this for? Just for the fun of it? Yeah. I like that hair light. I like that backlight. I would have added, me personally, and this is a subjective thing, more contrast, a little deeper. It's kind of flat. But you might have been going for that, which is to look, it looks a little more retro when it's flat. Throw an S-curve and some contrast, and you get some more depth there. So I don't want to go through each photo individually. Um, but you have some really, I like this. The colors are nice here. I definitely want you guys, especially being that we're in cinematography, experimenting with colors. And then talk about this one, because you were editing this one while I was in the lab helping someone else. What, what, were, what were you doing when you were in process? And you were using Photoshop. You weren't using Lightroom. Too. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right there. So I just, um, like, I selected it and I used that. There was, peop there was people's heads right here, so she went in with the masking tool yeah. or the clone stamp tool? It was the masking tool. Okay. And then she, and that would be a great example of something that would be really difficult to do in Lightroom, 
that is pretty standard in Photoshop. So, yeah, good job on that. Just a little, they were, if we had that other photo, if we had more time, we could show you. It, it was, that scale, those mm -hmm. look like they're going backwards. Oh, here? Yeah. No, it was right here. That's just kind of how that design panned out. Yeah, it was like literally through that little hump, right, if I remember correctly. So, no, that's cool. I think, um, I think you have a great start. How many total do you have up right now? 48. Good variety. So your trips, you have you have an Oklahoma trip. You had some zoo stuff. Family. What? Uh, if you go down, there's like two where it's mostly dark and then just like a little bit of light coming in. Or, uh, yeah, that room. This one? Yeah, that was pretty cool. And you had another one. Yeah, the absence of light is nearly as important as what light you do have. So if we'd have had all this stuff, whatever you're in, lit up in the other side, it'd be more distracting. So yeah. Cool. It does, it just does that when it doesn't know sometimes. Because uh, you can, yeah, basically they're just safer than sorry. Um, <clears throat> Because there's a lot of like fine art that's nude, obviously, and some of these sites have categories for that. Guru Shots isn't so big on that, but some of the other ones will have like entire sections on that. Okay, so Colton's. Um, just see if you can get, because I won't grade them until next week. Just see if you can get some more on. So we got iPhone 13, which shoots pretty high quality. So your ISOs at it. So this is where. On, on our ratings, she had one that was at 6,400 and her f-stop was at a four. See how your phone defaulted that to a one six, open it up as wide as it could, and that enabled the ISO to stay lower, as well as the shutter speed is 160 and a 5.1 millimeter range, so it's super wide, letting in a lot of light. The back camera, how many uh, cameras does, how many, different options is on the iPhone now. Is it like three or four? Yeah. Ooh, I like this. And for this, this is a lot more about building a portfolio, understanding framing, still talking settings. I'm not too worried about it not coming out of a Nikon, Canon, Sony DSLR, or you know, a mid-range uh, format camera or something. This is really more just about kicking in Easy to process, easy to practice. Uh, all cinematographers should be shooting photos daily. You should just shoot everything, whether you just like the light, see the framing, um, and of course, the story. If there's a story there. Where, where were you at for this? Sorry, uh, I think you said. This is over by the pier heading to the Lady Liberty. There's this like, structure that it's like, kind of like a spiral that goes up, and you can like go in the middle, or you can like, uh, just kind of look around. They weren't letting, letting anyone like, walk up it. It's kind of like a touristy attraction. I don't mm. know what it's called, but I was just like looking up, and I was like, that's cool. Yeah, it's a great perspective. This is, and location scouting's really big. Um, I've seen photos where like a plane would be flying over. Like how cool would that be? You have some, or really cool clouds. And then you have essentially a vignette with all the, uh, the rows going up. This one has some nice depth. Super, yeah, super calm. My critique on this would be your horizon line is skewed a little bit. See that? That's a super easy fix in Lightroom, and there's two easy ways to do it. The transform tool and the crop tool both straighten that for you. And now a new update, uh, the transform tool is now in the crop section. So I, when I was showing you the other day, we were on an older version. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So look, a photography characteristic that we would probably not likely do unless we're shooting high speed, your shutter speed is at a 1, 200, and 2200 basically, really high shutter speed, which if this was video, you know, they would be like a 148, a 1, 120, something like that, a 1, 240 if, if you were going like higher speeds. So your phone is compensating so it can keep that aperture really wide. And that's why you have this in shallow focus, or you have this out of focus, subject is in focus, but even the, the clouds are a little soft. If we, slowed, if we slowed that shutter speed way back down, we would have to raise that aperture and then more of this would be in focus. Okay, which is why I, I love photography for this particular class, because that enables us to really kit, kit through a lot of them. So what's our shutter speed here? We're at a 1.5, which is really um, a cool aesthetic, some sort of restaurant, something, gas station. Watch almost any good Hollywood film, like think John Wick or anything like that recently. Anytime they're outside, the ground is wet. And that enables, you have just got yourself free lights all through. So you have your neon sign, and then it, look at how much more light you have because of the reflection and how much that aesthetic does to that. So it's very common in a big picture, even a smaller film. Uh, but if we're like gorilla running up and down the street, we don't really have the option to get a fire hose out. But if you block off that whole scene, uh, you block off that entire street for that scene, then they often wet down the roads and stuff so they can get those shots. I actually have one real similar in mind that I took at a, after a rain in Columbia. So it rained. Um, and this picture would be okay if it hadn't rained. Like, it's kind of interesting. But because of the rain, I just love this photo. And I don't think I would have enjoyed it quite so. Like, I, I uh, pulled my phone out to snap that one, too. So, yeah, that's a cool shot. Um, and then something, you know, story-wise, subject matter, uh, a big message. Like, I could care less that this isn't lined up. I actually kind of like that it's at an angle, a little askewed. Uh, easy, again, really easy to fix if you were in Lightroom, but I think um, the imagined piece at an angle kind of gives it a, a little more of a message, something a little cockeyed. I'm a big theater fan, so you can sure. see that in New York and Yoko and stuff. That was just really cool to me. So. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the things that's cool about this project, too, is that it shows kind of who you guys are. And there's another one with reflection that's nice, right? Mm -hmm. That's water, so that one, and then the tree, the other one with the trees, uh, like, kind of bright, those are this one? taken from, like, calm water, so it's upside down. So that was at our hotel. They had, like, yeah, that's really cool. In North Carolina, and the water was really calm. It's kind of like a bog out there. So. It just wouldn't um, have that feel if you had just looked up and, because it's, Capturing the sunlight a little differently, it gives it kind of a haze. That's pretty cool. Kind of Bob Ross-esque, if he was upside down, I guess. And then, you know, lights, God, I just love. Concert, event, venue lights are just amazing. That's one heck of a career, too. So if you get really into lighting in this class, live event lighting, yeah, man, you can make some good money and have a lot of fun with that, too. And if you're one of those people who wants to travel and see a lot of stuff, you get in on a stage with a band or something like that. Uh, we worked with a guy that like four or five months out of the year, he would travel with ACDC. And that was just his job. And then off, in between that, he'd be a carpenter. Just a really, really cool dude. Um, pretty interesting life. Uh, any, any other ones that you guys want to comment on in Colton's? Yeah, I really like I like when, the way you're using reflections. You have three in a row there. Uh, and then a lot of negative space here. We haven't talked about this a whole heck of a lot, but when I was on a marketing team and say we were shooting a magazine ad, well, we might have one really interesting product that we want to place, but almost as important as a photographer is thinking of the negative space. Where's your graphics going to go, your text, your call to actions, those kinds of things. 
So when you have a lot of negative space, that gives you a chance. You could have like some Bible verse up there and sell it as a postcard. Just boom, just something like that. So be thinking a lot about when we're talking about composition, uh, and we mentioned it briefly with one of Caitlin's, not just what is in the frame and what's there, but also what space you're utilizing you have around it as well. All right, we'll go over to Aiden. So you were able to get 52 uploaded. Um, and were you one of them that you said on, can only do 10 at a time? Uh, no, no. I got it. I almost wonder if it has nothing to do with us and just like what Guru Shots can handle uploading at that particular, like if there's a lot going into a server or something. I, I just don't know. So let's just go through a few here. I haven't been able to look at Aiden's. I don't know what all you have in here. You have, this might be, okay, so one of, something like this, I would do black and white because you don't have a lot of color and then you can really pop some of those other areas. And you gotta have, Got to have a little, uh, I mean, there's always a story behind something like that, right? It's great. I, so I entered the five competitions that I looked to this morning, and that one has like the most votes of any of mine. Really? Not that I really care about that stuff, but I just thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> well, so that's, a, that's an example of where the cell phones have changed the way that we, uh, you know, just approach and document our daily lives. Quality doesn't matter if the subject is captivating, right? So. For whatever reason, people really like this guy trying to squeeze that shark thing on his face. Like, like a hand puppet. <laughs> okay. A uh, hand puppet. Gotcha. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, what's this? Uh, something from a museum? a museum in downtown Wichita. They had, uh, I want to say that was the stuff most soldiers carried in their World War I pouch. Okay. So this is where a polarizer would have helped you get some of that reflection out. Unless you like the reflection. Kansas City Westbound Express. And some of them, um, I've seen categories on Pond5 that required you to not have any, like it had to be a fresh raw file right out of the camera. Uh, same thought for me is <clears throat> because the colors are, you know, really like light tans and browns, some greens. I would go black and white with that one too, but I'm kind of a, I'm a little bit of a sucker for black and white. Where's this one at? Yeah, I'm from California. You really, you really need a three-day weekend. Yeah. I had a very long day yesterday. My, my brain's not here anymore. That's all right. That one I wish was a little brighter. You're not being quizzed on geography today. It's not the class. <laughs> I don't have the energy to quiz you on it either. This, uh, but no, these are cool. I'm also, okay, so when I see water, moving water, I should say, uh, when I see moving water, we're at a one one thousandth. So what is that going to do to the water if you're up that high? It should freeze it. It should freeze it. It's not going to look real smooth and, like, creamy. It's going to look real sharp and... Uh, yeah, I like the glass look of it more. You can see, yeah, glass is another way to put that. You have a fun perspective here. I had to get real low for that. My hair is in it. Someone's hair is in it. Someone's hair is right there. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Sometimes you got to really get on the ground, climb something to get that shot. Here's another one where we can talk about the water. Looking at uh, a one, almost 3,000, and look what it's done. You can see all the individual drops. If he'd have been at like a 130 or lower even, because he could do that with photography, it, it would have just looked like one, you know, what'd you say, glass. It looked like just like fabric coming down. And that's uh, super, this, it's the exact same thing if you're shooting that kind of stuff with film and motion and video, uh, but at the same time, um, so easy for us to process quickly when we do photography, so it's great. That's really cool. Uh, and I'm not even tired. How it has, 
an f-stop of 1.8, and this is in focus, but I can still see like individual buildings. The, phone, the iPhones, just the phones in general, the way that their sensor and their lens and everything talks to each other is a little different. Like that, a one eight on a DSLR, you would only be seeing this. Everything else on here would be so blurry. But that's a cool photo. You got something in the foreground. It doesn't look like, it could be like a, a Google Earth image, but then you throw in something in the foreground and that changes that story entirely, right? It puts you in that story differently. It puts your audience in that story differently from that point of view. So that's a great one too. Any that you guys wanted me to stop at? This is interesting. Is that back on, on you? An aircraft carrier, sure. And then we have Oh, that's what, the, okay, yeah. Minus the yellow. This is, this is Gage as the nemesis with, with his Russian accent or something. I loved that. It was so hard for me to keep a straight face during that. I always like to take photos of clapperboards for just to remember that I was around that set. I like these. Documenting kind of behind the scenes is one, something I've done a whole lot of. Okay, cool. Any any others that you guys want me to stop on real quick? What do you look? This frog? Yeah. Old. What's that say? Oh, old fly bait. <clears throat> he croaked. <laughs> where where was that? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna stop asking Aiden questions. He doesn't have any idea where he was for any of these photos. <laughs> We're just gonna. Any any others? He knows the one he knows most about is the shark photo. That's apparently where we should have just left off. All right, we'll go to Michael. Uh, and that's the other thing is, I kind of mentioned this throughout, and I, I like to mention it throughout the whole program that you guys are often when you have an assignment like this, you're out kind of showcasing your own life and and putting it out there. And this is a great way to get to know who you're in class with and what your interest levels are. So Michael's got a lot of nature and dogs. Not much different than, <laughs> I literally have that same dartboard from a photo that I found today. Um, so let me start up here. A pretty consistent theme of nature and pups. Yeah, that's cool. Good macro. A lot of macro competitions on here. In fact, I think I'm on a couple right now that you could probably enter with challenges. Playful farm life houses, black and white nature, nature hues. That would work in there, though. Um, we'll come back to the challenges. So, oop, I thought I was closing that. Great color. Did you crop this one very much? I would say, so you're at a 50. I'd, you could have opened up a little wider and probably dropped your ISO just a tad to get some of that grain out, but it's not bad. And you could try that AI in Lightroom that cleaned up that bird photo for me in 40 seconds. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, I only used that. Oh, man, that thing was. I haven't used it but during that lecture, and I was pretty impressed with how that came out. Um, yeah, great color. I like this. This is really cool. I wish the sun was a little bit higher. Sure. But yeah, I carry reflectors sometimes. Well, you guys have it, one of them right now, whoever I handed it to the other day. This one, you could have lowered that ISO a little bit and your shutter speed a little bit. You're probably handheld, so a higher shutter speed is helpful. But if you'd have gone down to like a 1 250 or a 1 160 maybe, then you could have lowered that ISO just a smidge, and that would have helped just yeah, clean up a little bit. It doesn't look, it, it's not unusable, but often that's a pretty high ISO, and that's where you're getting some of this in here. Well, I did want, like, for, like this one and the spider, I wanted it, the back to not be distracting at all. Well, and we were talking with Caitlin yesterday, Joey and I were talking about how 
when I first got into photography, it was no grain, get all that noise out of there. It's got to be so clean. And that has gone away. People actually go in and add grain back in so it looks more film-like, film-esque now. And I'm just thinking like, God, years ago, it was like getting grain out. And now, I mean, I remember when I first started my company, I paid for a separate software, a denoiser, a couple hundred bucks, just so I could clean up my wedding videos better because there was always bad light for me uh, in churches and the after parties. And I, I remember paying so I could get noise out. And then later on, they're creating overlays so you can toss grain back in. So I think this looks great. Though. This, is, this is a really nice one. I have like that same exact photo. I don't know why that tractor is still sitting out there, but it's made for some cool photos. It's probably going to be there for a while. This is cool. A little new life, old life. Nice uh, back and forth. I want to see that one. Oh, so you did the, the pull those colors out. You did it on what? On accident? accident yeah, because I was going to try the black and white, and then I did the first level. Like, okay, I'm going to keep this one. I think it looks really cool, uh, but you could slow that shutter way down, and then you could lower your ISO again. So. Just kind of the same thing. Uh, definitely going for context. It's like disturbing, but if you knew Dexter, that's pretty funny. That dog is hilarious. They're just funny when they're together because they're like the opposite dogs, but they just love each other. See, I didn't get to organize it because I basically was walking backwards with the camera low, getting Dexter. Dogs are really hard. Who was just, it was Talia's yesterday. She was trying to get, um, for her exposure project, she kept trying to get her dog, but he wanted to play with her. You know, I've had issues with things duplicating before too. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I had to delete a lot. So I've gone through and I'll be trying to load it in and I'll have two of the same image. What's frustrating about that is you start to get, uh, you start to acquire some attention. So you might win something, have views, get votes. If you have two of the same photo, I've got multiple photos that I've entered in different categories not realizing. So then I got like 10 votes on one and six on the other. And that's just frustrating because I'm trying to, I'm, part of the reason I want you guys to do this is a little bit to be organized, to help you with organizing. Any that you guys need me to stop on? Before we move on, there's some nice ones in there. Dawson, last but not least, you've got 50 on there. Good job. Hey, you know, um, trying to close that out. Building up that library, getting to that point of having, you know, you got to, you got to get through them. You got to sift through them. Where was this at? Okay. Oh yeah, awesome. So tell me about this. This is interesting. Is that a uh, flashlight? Yeah, my friend just wanted me to take a picture of him, so I was like, okay. <laughs> All right, friends. Here's your photo. So what I would do if I were you, when I'm talking about how the m number one thing I do almost every photo is crop, if you could have easily cut yourself out here, yeah. and that aesthetic would have been less distracting. Why is that so long? Yeah, that's awesome. It's like a real weird format, super narrow. I mean, I know it's from a phone, right? It's interesting, but yeah, I would, that would just be my critique is just cropping that a little bit more. Um, so what, what, you guys had like a, Trip that looks like Dylan Nature Center, right? That's cool. There's another really long one. That's that same camera. So that's what I would expect it to be a little wider. It's strange. And if we have time sometime, I want to look at those with you. Uh, same critique I had for Aiden or Colton, the horizon lines crooked, just something, it's so easy to fix that <clears throat> doesn't take long at all.
night stuff is really difficult, but fire, fire always has, has been captivating. Look at how slow that shutter speed goes when it's outdoors. And your ISO is at a 320. I would have raised that to like an 800 and then sped up your shutter speed just a little bit. But I'm sure your phone just automatically doing that. It's, uh, okay, cool. Probably Dylan H. Center again or something like that. Yeah. I swear, <laughs> this is funny. Let me go to mine real quick. If I can dig through all my junk. I swear we were sitting in the same seats. Oh. <laughs> we, were, we were like side by side almost. <laughs> Could have thrown popcorn at you. That's really cool. That's cool. But so that's one of the things I like about these uh, kind of showcasing what we have is you get a chance to kind of see what you have in common. Um, I've been to a Nuggets game before too, the only NBA game I've been to in person, which I just absolutely loved. I would have, I'd go to one every week if we had a team. You had some jellyfish. Did you not upload any of them? Oh, it was video. That's right. Yeah, jellyfish are awesome, and you put in those uh, like a fluorescent light or a black light, or you just you get creative with how they're transparent. It makes it really cool. Um, and some so sporting events, vacations, all good stuff. Um, let's look at. <clears throat> uh, does anybody want to pop into anything first? Ooh, this would be nice. Great colors for the fall. The fall is tough, uh, and if you're really into that kind of thing, you should go to Lawrence, Eastern Kansas. You know, take a day and drive up. It's just gorgeous. At, you got to hit it at that right time. And some of those old lakes, like Clinton Lake, just look so amazing during the fall. We'd always try to get those when we were um, when I was going to school up there. Uh, anything? Anything you guys want me to pop on? That's cool. Nighttime. Love plane shots. I don't get tired of those. Everybody has one, but they're great. Cool. So let's look at some of the competition. What What is some, I don't think from your, I've never really looked on anyone else's profiles. I don't know if I can see like what you've entered. Like that farm life, I got in that and I got in the place. Oh, none of them are completed yet. So that's why, unless somebody has a, oh, you have an achievement. You've done something. You got elite level, Colton. Yeah. That's cool. So what does that mean? That means that Colton, let's see, which one do you know? Which one makes me think. Uh, right side to his tears. So you have, <clears throat> I was hoping to see your. On the rise, just to oh, the yeah, OK. I don't know if that'll take me to you specifically or just everybody in that. You're in the elite, right? yeah. uh, but there's 2,200 in here, so we'd be digging forever. Command F. Command F. What was that number? Hmm. I've never tried doing it that well. And again, I do most of this on my phone. Um, well, we can see, OK, so if we go to All Star, this was the first place. And what was the makes me make me think? OK. Details, share your best photos that are thought provoking. OK, that's cool. And some of these, uh, 500px does a really good job of giving you, they all do it a little bit, but it gives you photography tips throughout, which I think is really cool. So we can see this person got the most votes. That's really cool. But if you got to, OK, so if we go into details, in order for you, mm, darn.
view by, oh, I'll look for following. Anyways, so <clears throat> that got 293 or something, yeah, 273. Yeah, oh, Dawson was in this one too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is what I mean by you start to build it up. So you've got 1,200 votes total, 300 or so from this one alone. And this is where you want an achievement, which is your elite. So that photo now has at least one award attached to it. And you start building that up. So when you have too many of the same photo, it gets a little discombobulated there. Uh, yeah, cool. You guys are both in it. Good job. These people must be on my other team. Oh, that one's cool. Well, that's cool. Wow. You get a lot of great ideas when you're in these kinds of things. It's similar to what... So she definitely went in and drew that in. And you can even see just slightly right there where she didn't quite get it feathered just right. Uh, but what an awesome photo. I would almost say like she could have done a couple of them, but probably took forever. And then people can go in and comment on stuff and things like that too. See, like I'm not allowed to comment on it. I'm you haven't got past that level. Not past the level of comment yet. Yeah, there's like so if you're <clears throat> there are challenges, I think I have to. So it'll tell you. So you have to get one successful swap, which was frustrating for me because that meant. Do you, have you guys tried to swap? Do you know what that is? Like swap, out you swap out a photo. And like here I have 80 swaps total. I have a bunch because I hardly ever do it. And it's, it's great if you put in the wrong photo or if it's not working. But for me to get to that rookie level, I literally had to find a photo that I didn't want to have in there and take it out. And I was like, why would I upload it? So you got to wait. And you have to get a minimum of 20 votes. And then the next one has to go 50 above that. So the next one has to get a minimum of 70. And I've had it suggest swaps on me where I've had like 800 votes. Like so you would have to get to like 850 votes before that swap would be successful. But these challenges are good. They kind of push you. So uh, to get to Challenger, which you guys could do pretty quickly, I moved up these first few really fast because I was kind of committed, I guess. One Elite, which you have now, um, and three successful swaps, and then 2,500 points. And once you get to a, one of these level, maybe rookie, then you can join a team. My new team? Hmm. Maybe I got kicked off my team. Um, when you get on a team, then you can do competitions together and get extra points. So, and it helps you earn swaps and keys and fills. Uh, but yeah, this is really cool, guys. I think you have a good start going. I didn't anticipate, because it was letting me do 21 uploads, I forgot that I probably had to work to that or there might be something more to it. Overall, though, I think you guys did well. So keep using it. If you don't have 50 yet, get up to 50, and I'll grade these next week. And that way we can see what Gage and Alex uh, and Jason have done, too. Any, anything, thoughts, questions? Yeah, have a good weekend. I want you guys to enjoy yourselves, relax. But you still shoot, shoot some, even if it's just your phone. You should be shooting all the time. Um, anytime you see some subject, if you walk away from a photo opportunity just because last night was a great example. I was tired, I was going to go to bed, and the moon was like perfect, no clouds. And so almost, I'd say a little begrudgingly, I went and grabbed my camera, grabbed my lens that's long, had to go find a charged battery. You know, I could but I am going to be really happy because the results came out nice. So it cost me an extra 30 minutes of going to bed after a really long night before with the baby. But uh, you will, you'll never regret going out and getting that shot later, even if it feels like it's kind of a pain in that moment. Cool. All right, guys. Have a good, have a good weekend.